Hi, and welcome back to this tutorial on converting IFC to structural analysis. To start, I'll open Rhino. I'm using Rhino 6 in this tutorial. However, you should be able to use Rhino 5. Just make sure you have downloaded the correct plugins as we provide separate installers for Rhino 5 and Rhino 6. I'm going to select a new project template in millimeters. It does not generally matter what, you, what units you work in. However, it is generally optimal to work in the same units as the IFC model has been authored to. Typically with Re Revit and Tecla, this is millimeters. And in this case, that's true. If you're using Rhino 6, we have recently implemented a menu bar dropdown for the, I for the Rhino IFC plugin. If you're using Rhino 5, or for some reason you cannot view the GG Rhino IFC menu bar, you will need to access the commands from the command line. This is quite an easy process. To get an understanding of the model, I'm wanting to transfer into structural analysis. I'm going to import this into Rhino. This will allow us to view the IFC and allow us to get an understanding of the particular elements in the model. Also, what type of model it is. I can import the model using the import IFC command in Rhino or selecting it from the GG Rhino drop down menu. Once I select the appropriate file, an option dialog will appear. There are a number of options you can select when importing an IFC model. However, for this tutorial, the standard options will be fine. If you do want more information on this, you can read more about each option in the technical documentation. You can now hit zoom extents to view the full model in the perspective view. I will change the viewport settings to shaded as well to get a better visualization. You can see that this building is a reasonably typical steel frame building. However, if I zoom around, it does contain a reasonable amount of detail. Most connection plates are modeled to some degree, and there is also a lot of peripheral members, such as trimming or other members likely associated with architectural or facade detailing requirements. Both of these would not generally be required in the structural analysis model. The model here is likely to be derived or used as a fabricated model. Given members are modeled as per their real length. For example, columns seem to be running through each level and only appear to stop and start at prescribed splice locations. To make things a little more complicated here, there are a number of trusses with varying truss steps around the edge and internal to the building. It is worth noting that it is not a necessary step to open the model in Rhino prior to completing the conversion to structural analysis, but does help to understand how the model is built up as we start to look at some of the different conversion options later on. As you will see later, you can also use this as a good reference point to back check the converted model. I am now going to open Grasshopper and navigate to the Geometry Gym Structural Analysis tab. Depending on which structural analysis plugin you have installed, these should be visible in this tab. You can see here I have the SAP 2000 plugin and the Strand 7 plugin currently loaded. I'm going to start by clicking on the base tab of the SAP plugin and selecting GG SAP Convert IFC. To make it easier to understand the inputs of each component, I'll switch the Grasshopper Display option to Draw Full Names. The first input is a true false input which tells the component to run when true, and the second is the input file path for the IFC model. I'll select a boolean toggle from the parameters tab in Grasshopper and also a file path import. I'll leave the toggle to false for now and select my IFC file, the same one as before. The options is a set of options which can, which can allow the user to input specific variables and user generated snapping planes for a particular IFC conversion. 
Again, you can select the GGSAT Convert IFC options from the SAT Base tab. Note that these are optional. A set of default values will be used if no input is provided. As SAP is a COM-based application, Geometry Gym communicates with the program directly through its API. If I look at the component for strand 7, you will notice an additional input for an external file to write the output file to, of which you can import manually into strand 7. This is typically a text-based file input. I will quickly explain what each option is used for, but we'll do our initial conversion without too much tinkering of these. The plan node seek provides the user an input on how far a member will search from its end node position to snap to another node within the same horizontal plane. The vertical node seek does, the sim does a similar thing for nodes a certain distance from a particular vertical plane. A separate seek tolerance is provided for bracing elements as they are typically further away from connected node points. The Geometry Gym components try to categorize members into separate groups by associated keywords in the elements named and description or tag to allow the specification of different seek tolerances something which can be likely improved in later revisions or at the request of users. The flex tolerance is a last check for the final deviation of the member off its original axis. The opening size relates to openings in 2D elements such as floors and walls, which will be ignored if smaller than the prescribed value. Note that none are applicable in this model for this tutorial. The split option tells it to split members at junctions, for example, split columns at beam locations and truss cords at each intersecting member. This would be typically required for most structural engineering applications. Project nodes to stories will project nodes to associated stories. If a building story is defined within an IFC file, then a plane at that level will automatically be applied. If you want to manually define this process, you can select false here. It is also worth noting that not all IFC authoring applications provide stories on export. For example, there are no stories in the model we are working with. Therefore, we will be manually controlling this process in later videos. Horizontal planes are XY planes which you want to <coughs> snap nodes to. If stories are present in the model, inputted planes will be added to these planes. Projection planes typically represent vertical planes to snap the structure to, and restraint planes provide the user the option to automatically set restraints to model nodes within the provided vertical node seek. The include and exclude class filters provide a way to filter elements out of provided models to convert from IFC to structural analysis. And finally, the, the map, map path and pro map path allow for mapping files to be provided to map user-defined materials and profiles in structural analysis applications from the associated IFC file profiles. The associated default values are what we would expect for a steel building. For a concrete building, larger default values may be necessary, and these are generally <coughs> a trial and error process. For this particular building, I'm going to leave the default plan node seek at 200. 
I will update the vertical node seek to 175 and slightly reduce the brace node seek to 900. I will now switch the toggle to true to send the model to SAP. As you can see, there is still a little bit of tidy work we can do to make this come through in a more desirable output. A lot of the little connection members have been passed through, and due to the density of elements and nodes, we are getting some undesirable outcomes when truss cords are not completely straight. In the next video, we will look at adding planes and filters to simplify and snap the analysis model. We'll also look at adding restraints.